Welcome to the My Personal Football Coach Youth Soccer Player Development Podcast, episode 39 with Rafael Ulatowski. Welcome to MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Soccer Player Development Podcast. Discover all the secrets, hints and tips about soccer player development and soccer coaching from some of the leading figures in world soccer. Here's your host, Saul Isaacson Hurst. Hi guys, welcome back to another show. Uh, this week we've got a fantastic guest, Rafał Ulatowski. Uh, Rafał's uh, uh, from Poland. I met Rafał when we were both presenting in a conf- on a conference in Poland and uh, he's a big, big personality. He's got an amazing story to tell and listen, he's worked at the very highest level of the game. Uh, he's got some amazing experiences. Uh, he was assistant coach with the Poland national team for the World Cup campaign. Uh, he's also been a head coach uh, in in the in the Polish in the top league in Poland, and also now he's um, he's head of coaching at Lech Poznan, one of the biggest clubs in in Poland in their academy. So a real interesting journey uh, with with uh, experience at the highest level, some great experience and knowledge to share. So I was really excited when he agreed to come on the show, and uh, like I said, he's a great personality. So he's, it's really interesting guy to to listen to. So this is one I'm I'm sure you're going to enjoy. Uh, I've got a big couple of weeks coming up, me personally, uh, flying out to LA in, in a couple of weeks, which I'm really, really looking forward to. Uh, obviously, we work with the LA Galaxy out there as a partner club, but also some local clubs. So we work with um, LA Galaxy Orange County, uh, so they're using the app. Uh, they've got a pro club package, so I go out there, I film them, pl- their players doing some challenges, and we get those guys on the app as well, so that really hate- helps with engagement. So really excited to work with those guys from out there, and also uh, meeting lots of other clubs. Uh, and uh, look, if you're, out, if you're in LA area, uh, in mid-May, um, you want to meet me and talk about the club partnership or the app, or just want to connect, uh, let me know. Uh, really excited to meet as many people as I can when I'm out there. Also, thanks so much for all the uh, positive words and feedback I'm getting about the My Personal Football Coach Level 1 e-learning course for coaches about uh, ball mastery, 1v1 and small-sided games. Uh, really privileged and uh, you know buzzing that you, know, you guys are really buying into it and uh, getting so much value from it. I had another great message from um, uh, Shak- Saksham in, uh, in, 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 over in India and uh, he said he was happy to put it down there and uh, give some feedback about the course. So here's Saksham. Uh, telling us about his experience of the My Personal Football Coach Level 1 Ball Mastery 1v1. Hi Saul, this is Saksham from India. I've been using the My Personal Football Coach app and it's been of great help. Things that I liked from the 1v1 coaching course especially was that you must create a buzz and intensity in your training sessions and keep your coaching points short and avoid long cues. I think that's really helped me in my coaching and I've seen a change in the players in the way we play. Uh, and also with the way the players react to the training sessions. Uh, thanks a lot and uh, really appreciate it. Cheers, mate. So look, if you're, if you're a coach and you're interested in uh, you know, uh, upskilling your knowledge about uh, ball mastery and 1v1 and small-sided games and, and understanding how to use them effectively in your sessions, uh, yeah, please look, go to mypersonalfootballcoach.com now, go to the coaches section and check out the uh, that e-learning course. It's unique, there's nothing like it in the world. And yeah, look, like I said, I'm really... Uh, really privileged about all the feedback you guys uh, are giving it and if you are enjoying the show please do remember to leave uh, some feedback leave a review it really does help and we really do appreciate it anyway yeah uh, without further ado uh, let's get into this show it's a real good one i know you're going to enjoy it so rafael olotowski welcome to the show welcome nice to nice to meet you again uh good can you just give us a little bit of a brief background about your playing and coaching journey up to this point just briefly go through each of those things what you've done in your career uh, playing it, it was uh, semi-professional level in poland up to the second division uh, so it, it at the end it was some professional football and uh, then i started uh, coaching in at the early age i was uh, 24 25 I started working with a junior team under uh, 15 this time with my uh, local club, with the local team, which was, which was uh, the, the group of players that uh, two of them, they started a professional career after, uh, after our journey. And then uh, I started coaching some uh, international football school players from Brazil. 
there was one uh, private uh, man who wanted to bring some Brazilian players to Poland. To they were at the age of uh, 14, 15, 16, a group of 20 Brazilian players in a private football school. So it was three years all together, and we didn't play in a, a league because we were not allowed to do it. But we played some friendlies in Poland and Europe, mostly in the Eastern Europe. After that, I went to professional coaching with a second division team in Poland. I was assistant coach with, with a team called Piotrkowie It was uh, 1999, so almost uh, 20 years ago. And since then, I'm fully pro. I was working also in Iceland for uh, four and a half years. It was an amazing story to, to talk about because I went from the big city, from the country which is uh, almost 40 million people, to a very small place, to, to Iceland. It's a beautiful country, but uh, at this time it, they, they started the football, uh, football story. I was four years working in a smaller, smaller team in, uh, on the east coast of the Iceland, a place called Fastus Fjordo with 500 people. So imagine being yourself then from a big city like London and then going to the east coast of Iceland for a very small, for a small place. But fantastic, fantastic uh, people, uh, hard workers on the pitch and outside the pitch. Uh, Iceland is not fully professional yet with the teams, uh, including players who are going to work and after this they are just coming to training and enjoying football. So as a coach who was uh, working with, uh, with big standards in Poland, with professional players, which you have, you have players that you want to train at 10 o'clock, so it's no problem, you want to train at 5 o'clock, second training is no problem, but then you go to Iceland and then you see that you have to adjust yourself to the to the scenario of, of this country, of this mentality of players. That football is not fully pro there and then they are going to work and after that they can come and train with you. So if you have players like that, you have to know that the number one, two and three rule is that the players, they have to enjoy it. And that was the, my best lesson from, from my standard. You have to do what uh, what is what brings you pleasure to and an enjoyment to, to train. And, and then, then so just yeah. so just go through them briefly what you did just each just almost like each stage each each job and then we'll go in depth into each one if you like. So what happened after Iceland? Then I I came back to Poland. A friend of mine invited me to his uh, coaching team. It was Lech Poznan. So Lech Poznan is uh, top two in Poland. There is a Legia Warsaw, Legia Warsaw, and then Lech Poznan. We are we are top two teams in Poland, and I was for two years uh, assistant coach in Lech Poznan. Then we went together to. Another team, Zagłębie Lubin, it's also a professional team in, in Polish uh, extra class. it means that in Polish Premier League. And after two years of time, we got the champion of Poland, it was year 2006. Since 2008, I started my own uh, coaching journey. I was the first, I was the manager there, or we call it head coach in Poland. We don't call it manager, we call it the head coach in Zagłębie Lubin. After that, I was in national team, the men's national team, the A men's national team, and if I was the assistant coach with a famous Dutch man called Leo Benhacker for uh, for another two years. And since then, when we finish um, World Cup qualification uh, to World Cup 2010 in South Africa, we didn't qualify through, so we just finish our job. And since then, I'm uh, head coach in a few Polish teams of, like. Krakowie, Kraków, Lechia, Gdańsk, Hesdow, Hatów, they are good names in Poland, these teams, but maybe you haven't heard about them yet. And for my last three years, I've, I've been doing the head of uh, coaching job at the Academy of Lech Poznan. And for the last three weeks, I've been uh, also involved into the reserve team as a head coach, because our head coach moved to the first team of Lech Poznan. So uh, maybe I'm temporarily doing his job until end of the season and our season finishes in the middle of, of uh, June. So it's almost it's two months more as a, as a coaching uh, job in here in Poznan, in La Poznan. So, um, yeah, so a pretty impressive resume. You've been pretty busy, busy man over the last few years. Um, huh. let's, let's just wind back into that um, first assistance coach job you had, that first first team job. 
Uh, what was that like in terms of what's the, what was the difference in terms of them when you were working with those boys from Brazil in the academy environment? What were the, what were the initial pressures and stresses and differences in that? Uh, it, that was well, when you work with Brazilian player before it was your main job was to bring them up to the seniors and let them play professional football in Poland. It was a group, like I told you, up to 20 players, so they had their own team, uh, their rules, they didn't play any um, league football, so it, it was just friendly. And we didn't, uh, we wanted just to create some few individuals that the other teams in Poland will see that they are good enough to play professional football. So the results, they were not main duty, the main duty was to prepare them for the professional football. And after that, when I started my uh, assistant coaching job in, in this team in, in, in Piotr Piotrkovia, it was just about the results, because you, you have to understand, and if, of course you understand it, then if you are playing professional football, then your main job is to bring, bring points, bring victories, because then it saves your job and then brings you some small glory after every, every victory. I mean, I mean. So that was the, that was, so there was the there was the difference in the Brazilian group. You work for individuals to let them play professional football, but when you play professional football in the league, in the other team, then you have then your responsibility is of course to to win to win the game. And and what was I mean? Just look at those. Did you what did you notice about the Brazilian boys in terms that you worked with a lot of players? Did you notice anything different? About the Brazilian boys than you do about the the Polish boys, or just generally, if you're going to of stereotype. Course, of course, of course, uh, fantastic technique, individual technique. We said that they are born with the ball, with with, with their feet, and it's a true. My this fine story is that my brother-in-law is from Brazil. My sister wants wants to see the game, and she fall in love in one Brazilian player, and they've been together since then. So it's 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 20 years. And uh, technique is a high quality, individual skills high quality, fitness level is a little bit different because uh, as you know in Eastern Europe we base mostly about some fit in a good preparation, in a good fitness, stamina, endurance, power and, and strength is uh, also very important in, in developing uh, in Poland and in Eastern Europe. So Brazilian player they lack of this. The lack of uh, tactics, individual and the group and the team tactics at the beginning. So our job was to uh, use the perfect technique and uh, to create some environment that they can learn how to play football in in Europe. And that was our main 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 job. And so so you, say, them, they, you say they're they're born with the ball at your feet. It's very much is that that's it, isn't it? It's that culture seems to just you know they inherently develop these technically gifted players. So I mean, mm -hmm. so then my next question would be like thinking about you know your your time. How could you do you think you could try and reproduce that in an environment like Poland? If you spend so much time on the beach and on the street <laughs> football like yeah. they do in, in 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 Brazil, maybe yes. But uh, we have it's a different mentality, different approach. Uh, as uh, as you know, they were not uh, high educated kids. They were kids from uh, from. From lower class in Brazil, in the age of 14, 15, they they came to Europe. Their parents sent them maybe to discover another life, so better life through football. So they could spend. There was nice to work with them because uh, every single day from Monday to Friday we had two times training, a double sessions a day. There was a game on Saturday always. Of course, it was friendly, but we we tried to play every Saturday some friendly game. So it was nice, nice work with them because um, their mentality, they, they, they freedom, they join us of football of life when there was summer in Poland. It was was absolutely pleasure and, and, and to work with them. And the tricks, the the individual technique, the passing, the controlling the ball, and uh, there was high quality, like I told you. And it was it was really good group of of of, of individuals. Hmm? And so um, then, so you move into the first team environment for the assistant coach. How did that different environment? You talked about that, obviously, the stress on winning and the importance that's, uh -huh. that's there. How did that affect your your session design and, and how you communicate with the players? I was lucky enough that 
I think that I became assistant coach because I was working with this Brazilian player. And the owner of this international school, football school, was also owner of this team. So our job was to select always two, three players that they are ready and they are able to play in professional football in Poland. So my, my, my first job was to help them to take this big step from junior football from Brazil into senior football in Poland. And I was mostly working with them about individual tactics, about their positioning on the field, about uh, knowing the rules of big, big football. So I was maybe the right hand man for, for them to step into, into professional football in, in adults, in seniors in Poland. Developing session, it was always incorporating them into our job. It was uh, if we have some tactics, we all. I was also um, responsible for um, letting them know what is they was on the field, what is what is their responsibilities about the uh, uh, tactics when we are attacking, what we are defending. That uh, it was not easy job because, as you know, if you look at Neymar, he's always kind of free man and he likes doing things on his own. So imagine uh, the players in mentality of Neymar, Neymar but of course with uh, less skills than, than he is. So it was, it was nice to, to work with them, but it was, not so, it was not an easy job because they were also a little bit angry, a little bit disappointed if they were not in the lineup, if they were, uh, if the coach was trying to tell them something against, they, uh, against them. So, you have to be good psychologist also to work with this group of players in kind of an environment we've got in, at this time in Poland. But overall, it was a big, big lesson for me, and I'm, and I'm helpful that I, I could have discovered this. And so then you make you, you decide to go to Iceland. Um, how did that come about, and what was that like in terms of moving to another country and that the 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 you know the pressures and the results of that. It was absolutely a surprise for me because it was not uh, work uh, by an agent or anything like that. A friend of mine, I was uh, with him uh, studying. He went to Iceland before and uh, at, at the Christmas time in 1999, he, he, he called me and he said, hey, listen, I'm, it's an advertisement in newspaper that there is a small local team who is looking for the playing coach. So if you are interested, I can give you a number and then you can call the channel. And I was working with, with uh, this Brazilian group, with uh, also in uh, I was in assistant assisting role in a uh, club in the watch then this time. And I decided, yeah, it's not, it cost me nothing to call the, pre- the chairman of, of some local team on Iceland. And I called this guy and he said that he's of course interested, but I have to know that they are not fully professional because I... I told him my resume, my CV, where I was playing, where I was coaching, and he said, "But you have to understand that we are not fully pro like you used to live in this uh, in this condition. But we are a good group of 15, 20 players who wants to play for fun, who wants to enjoy football, and who wants to maybe to win game. And then if you are lucky enough, we can go, we can be promoted. And when when I had this promoted, it was like green light for me. Yeah, I'm ambitious, and I want to." See how is it in in different country. So at the age of 27, I moved to Iceland. It was April, and it was was not easy to find uh, grass fields because there was a time that uh, there was this much snow in this in this place. So we couldn't we couldn't work on the grass field until the first game of the season. We had to use different area like indoor, like gym, like uh, do some fitness uh, running, or like. It was enough. To, it was enough to play in football on the on the lake when the water was off from the lake. There was the the, the clear sand, and then we could use big goals and play 11 v 11. So it was also if I if I say it now, is I can't believe that uh, I was working in conditions like that. But hmm. at the end of the day, you are lucky. You are happy that uh, at the early age of your life, or coaching play. You can discover different different conditions for for football. You play with Brazil and you go to Iceland and you you don't have a regular size pitch. Then you have to find solutions how to improve yourself, how to improve your players. And that was a nice story because I came from professional football in Poland and for my first training, we said that it's enough for us to train three times a week in this because they are working. There was a fish factory and there was the season for 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 fishing. So. 
they couldn't make it to every training session. But we decided that, okay, three times a week is a training, plus number four is a, is a friendly match before the season. And for the first training, they came 20 players, yeah, because there is a new coach from Poland, yeah, we can see what he's doing. Okay, so the first training, we didn't have peace, so we just went for running. Yeah, some fitness running, around 60, 70 minutes, different, different kind of stuff. No football. The training number two, it was only 15 players, okay, so we were running on Monday, so Wednesday, let's go to gym, because we need some, some power or some lifting. Okay, just 15 players. After this, no football. And on the training number three, there was only 10 players and the chairman came to see what's, what's happened. Why the players are complaining about the new coach from Poland. And then he told me this, this, uh, this story, uh, which is for me, is going to stay for, with me until the end of my life. That number one rule in football for the non-professional player is that they have to have enjoyment. They have to come. They have to know that there is a football that then you have to... Uh, invite them to training by nice things in football. Nice things in football for non-professional is always playing football. So from this week, I knew that every every single session I have to add some football into my into my training. So from this moment, we had uh, nice always 15, 20 players. I knew that if you work from 8 o'clock till 4 o'clock as a carpenter outside in Iceland. Then you come to training at 5 o'clock, <laughs> then I cannot do some nice tactical things, but I have to do something to prepare them physically and prepare them mentally that they are enjoying, that they want to come for another training. So it's a, another big lesson in my life that always players, they have to wake up in the morning and they have to wait for the training that because they know it when they come to training, there is always fun, there is uh, enjoyment, there is a football. And uh, that's the big lesson from myself. And what, what was the main, you know, things you, as yourself, as an individual, culturally, what was the main, um, you know, the challenges for you living in a different country like that? The big challenge was that I was playing coach. I was a player and I was coach at the same moment. And uh, I remember my first game, I got a red card, two <laughs> yellow cards. So was I was I a good example for my players for? <laughs> <laughs> I, not so good behavior uh, to the ref. I, I don't think so. But it was 27. I was 27. You know, I wanted to win every game, and I wanted to be the best coach in the world this time. And I knew that uh, you can uh, that you can um, connect it together to being a good player and a good coach. And at the end of the day, it's not gonna have, it's not gonna work because uh, my first was. Um, my first idea was that I have to do something to uh, keep this thing together. So I, I was not able to judge it perfectly. And if I have a player who is uh, going to play in my position, then I said, OK, let him play because then he will be more valuable for the team than me. Because I can be then as a coach, not as a playing coach. Even if his uh, quality was a little bit lower than, than, than myself, I, I I said to myself, okay, I will let him play because then I can be coach from the sideline and then I can I can help the team better. So uh, for this reason, uh, it was very difficult to connect it together with uh, playing and, and, and coaching because sometimes um, you have to think more about the team than about yourself or about yourself as a player that you can give more to the team. And it was nice, but it was a great experience and uh, fantastic people and. My family still lives in, in this small place on the east coast of Iceland. I have three lovely kids over there, so every time I, I have three, so I can, I'm flying there to, to visit them. And it's a fantastic uh, experience. Lovely. So then your next challenge comes at Lech Poznan as assistant coach. Tell us about how that came about and then what, what, were, the, what were the different pressures and strains, obviously, at working at that high level. A friend of mine this time, he was coaching them. He, he is a very known coach in Poland now because he is under 21 uh, national team coach. He qualified to to European Championship in Italy with his team. But this time he called me many times and he said, "Hey, please come to me because we can be good together." And then he will be uh, my assistant in a fantastic club, very famous club in Poland, like Poznan. So of course, if you if you get uh, invitation like that, you should not uh, say no because it might not happen again. That it, team like that and coach like that is inviting you. And it was the uh, 
story of my life that uh, it was very difficult time for this club. Uh, there was the um, uh, owner of this club was not able to pay us. Uh, believe me or not, but we had six or seven months without any wages. It's happened like that. It was 2004. But uh, it was like that this moment. So then it's another uh, environment. Then you have to work with players who are supposed to get paid, but they are not getting paid. So you are playing in professional football in uh, critical conditions for uh, social conditions. That it, of course all of them they had the families, they had kids, and they are not bringing money to um, to their wives. So, so it's difficult. It's another difficult story, and you have to manipulate them. That of course you have to play for yourself. We all have the same problem. We, as a coaching staff, we we don't have money again as you, but then. You have to play for your ambitions, for the team, for the club. Because if you play well, maybe your next team will be a team with uh, with good uh, with good uh, financial conditions, and then you will you will get what what uh, you're supposed to get. It was difficult, but it, if you have bad times, then the team is very close uh, to each other because we are in a in a in a, in a poor standard, if you, in financial standard. But then we are enjoying being together because we are all on the same uh, on the same bus or on the same road. That, that we all want to play football because of football, and we want to play football to be better and, and to find another another team in the future that, that they will say, okay, they are good players. Uh, they they didn't say we quit or there was not white flag uh, waving on the stadium, but we want to play. We want to win every game, and it it's happened like that. Of course, at the end of the season. The all money we supposed to get it, we got it, but we had to wait a little bit longer than usual to, to get back. And it's Lech Poznan, it's a big club with fantastic stadium, fantastic supporters, 25 30,000 people uh, every single game this time. So uh, it was it was good team, good players, nice atmosphere within this group of, of, of players with coaches as well. And um, what was that like? I mean, working in that environment in such a big club, and with those, you know, you got the fanatical fans. You know, what, what are the, you know, the day-to-day pressures like dealing with that, having to win? You know, and what was that different? I'm coming from Iceland. Yeah, this time the the, the Icelandic football was then mostly about also about good preparation because they are Vikings, they are hard workers, they want to do some extra things in football in a fitness way. <laughs> So I came after four years on Iceland, four and a half, to my first training in uh, in the middle of the week in Le Poznan, between game on Saturday, Saturday, and I came on Wednesday. And the coach said, okay, uh, so do some warm-up and then we play big football, because it's Wednesday, it's uh, big spaces, we can play 11 v And my warm-up in the middle of season was 25 minutes. <laughs> it was much too much, but I used to work like that on Iceland. And the players in Poland, they were not, uh, they were not up the standards of, of fitness preparation, like uh, so big like on Iceland. So uh, there was the Wednesday, they they were very tired after this my first warm up, and they, the second day they were all you know not uh, they were very tired. They were complaining that new coach is coming and he wants to do too much for us and, and uh, please uh, do something. Uh, Less uh, next next time because uh, we're not gonna be prepared for the for the next um, league game. I don't remember how was the, the the league game after that, but it was my first impression that if you are coming from different country to different country from Iceland that they are hard workers, fitness is top, to the team like in Poland that is based on footballers more than about hard workers, then you have to also change your approach, change your mentality. But of course, uh, I had to discover on my own that that you have to adjust to the group of players you you have at your disposal at, at, at incoming days. That the different uh, approach, different uh, working uh, loads in one place, and different working loads in another one. And from day to day, you have to you have to adjust because if you not, then you have trouble with players and with with, with results. I suppose that's you've had already those you know those yeah, like that. those those. Those four, four jobs, jobs you've, we've talked about there is that you've had experiences with, you know, different cultures, different levels, and I suppose as a coach that must be really beneficial for you, understanding how to be adaptable and 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 learning those environments. 
Yes, it's the national team coach, Mr. Loben Hacker. It's a Dutch coach. He's, uh, I think, about 75, 76 today. And uh, I say to my, because I'm responsible at this moment for the coaches here in, in Lech Poznan, for developing coaches. But I told them story because they were asking me also how did I go to national team, how I was working with Mr. Ben Hacker. And I say that today we live in the area of, uh, in the times of uh, Pep Guardiola. The Guardiola is very famous because of his achievements with Barcelona, with Bayern Munich, with, with Manchester City at the moment. And so imagine in the uh, late 80s and beginning of 90s, there was the coach in Real Madrid and there was the coach Leo Van Hacker. You don't, you are not, you, the, Real Madrid is not hiring coaches uh, by accident. They are searching, they are trying to do their best in the coaching. And the Lovan Hacker was coaching Real Madrid. No accidental coach is the champion of Spain. No accidental coach is the champion three times in a row in Spain. At this time, Lovan Hacker was three times, coach, three times champion in Real Madrid in Spain. So you can see that his uh, experience, his charisma is on the top of the tops. You cannot ask for more. And I, and I experienced this in national team. I was in fantastic two years with national team with with good guys, with Robert Lewandowski, who was also making his first appearance, his debut in the Polish national team, with Łukasz Fabiański, with Artur Poruc, with, with players like that, who, who were there in the top, uh, in the top uh, professionals in Poland. So it was also a pleasure to work with, with professional players like that, and also with big, big guy with charisma like Leoben Hacker, who was working more about mental way of football, of uh, Telling them that there is uh, the future is bright for them, that is up only up to them. That our opponents we played against Portugal, against Ronaldo, we beat them to one. We played against Czech, against uh, many other teams, and that's also big, big part of football is a mental preparation for the game and uh, no fear, but just uh, like uh, self confidence. Uh, it was mainly his job, and, and when I learned a lot about. Uh, his uh, steps to building up the the, the self self confidence in the players. It was great, great story. And from time to time, I'm I'm in touch with Mr. Ben Hacker, and it's it's absolutely privileged and, and um, yeah, I'm lucky enough to to have worked with him for two years in Polish national team. So tell us about we'll go we'll talk about that then the national team job. Uh, I mean, how did that work for you in terms of you know you've gone from working day to day full time into a part-time position. How did, how did that work in terms of splitting your day up and your week and your months? How, what, what was your role like? First first two weeks, maybe one month, it was pleasure. Yeah? It was so a fantastic, nice job. You're just going from on the weekends to see your players playing in national team. Of course, in Poland and abroad, you see some good football. You, see, you talk to your players after the game because I always had a chat with them and how are they and, and things like that. But after one month, I was missing the field, day-to-day uh, -day basis, because in national team you you meet once in a month for uh, five, six days, and you play two games, and then you say hello to your players, and then you are uh, you are waking up in the morning, and there is no training. There is just some uh, video analysis, some phone calls, and uh, keeping them up to date what uh, what is uh, gonna happen next in national team. So it was mostly about. This role. My role was always to to count the minutes of every single national team player, to be in touch with them, to tell them, uh, to know how are they, and to tell them what is uh, what is their future uh, for the incoming days. And if there was the uh, national team games, of course, I was responsible to let them know that this and this time is meeting. We are playing against this and this team, and uh, during the national team. Uh, Camps. Uh, my job was also on the field to helping uh, Lovren Hacker uh, communicate with players, to set some trainings. And um, another great story is that <coughs> my first uh, my first days in national team on the camp was the day before the training. Leo told me, "Okay, you will get some offensive group, and then prepare some 20-25 minutes with with the offensive group." Okay, so it was, uh, for, I know, that it was the dinner and he told me, and he said, okay, at the breakfast, we're going to discuss, show me what kind of exercise you design, and then we can uh, go over it and to, to let them, to let you know that you are, you are perfectly prepared for that. 
Okay, so I decided, yeah, we have 25 minutes, we can do, okay, one exercise, five minutes, so if I do four exercises, it's enough. I will shoot from the right side, from the left, with the head, and from the volley, blah, blah, things like that. And Lord asked me in the breakfast, what's, what's your, your idea about the training? We have 25 minutes, so show me, my friend, what, what you're going to do with players? <laughs> and uh, I had everything perfectly designed on the paper with, you know, with colors and this. He said, what are you going to do here? I told you you have 25 minutes and then you design training for 80, 85 minutes. <laughs> and I told you you have 25 minutes. I said, hey boss, five minutes from the right side, five minutes from the left, five minutes from the header and, and crosses. He said, no, 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 my friend. That's what is Polish way of coaching. You know everything in theory about football, but if you come to the field, then why you are doing so many things in one time? No, just design me one exercise, do it 10 minutes from one side, 10 minutes from the from, uh, other side, tell me your coaching points, and it's enough. You don't have to be fancy with so many exercises. One exercise with coaching, with details, what are you going to coach Lewandowski, what are you going to say to Smolarek, there was another fantastic guy, the top scorer in uh, qualification 2008 in Europe, uh, Eddie Smolarek, nice guy from Holland, but he was in the Polish passport. So tell me, tell me what I'm going to do then. Oh, and that was another big step in my mentality, that if you are working with professional players, it's not about as many exercises as you can squeeze it into one training session, but do it one or two exercises, repeat them every time you can, not to let them play, be bored, but uh, have an idea how to um, how to set this exercise and then move more and more advanced, advanced, advanced. So it was it was another big milestone in my career that the coaching session is not about as many exercises as you can wish, but do it one, two exercises and then develop them perfectly with details, with everything which is based on. In today's reality, we say it in the game model, but in the, in the, mm. at this time, we, we never heard about the things about game, mod, game model then. So it was, it was perfect. It was perfect for me to meet uh, Laura Ben Hacker on my coaching course. So it's interesting, yeah, you talked a little bit about uh, psychology and then obviously the, the planning. What, what was the main tactical takeaways you took from working at that level with that fantastic coach? Tactically, we... Um, we if we want to dribble the ball, we can do it only on the opposite uh, half. Never dribble the ball around your penalty area, never lose the ball, never miss the ball in a, uh, because you want to dribble across your opponent in your half as a defender or defensive midfielder. No. Passing game on our half, safe and easy. And then, if we want to be creative, then of course there are special areas on the pitch and on the field that you can do it and just do it in the offensive uh, area. Uh, thank you very much. It was always saying the story from, from Leo. And it, it was working that there was the freedom in the offensive third of, of the opponent. Very careful, very quiet build up from, uh, from the goalkeeper in our defensive third. Moving through the offensive, some creation, some uh, phase. But based on, on quality, based on little bit of tactical ideas that if you want to play uh, with uh, outside, uh, <clears throat> with uh, offense. If you go to offense, if you want to play with the wingers, then what we should do with the winger? What we can uh, propose to our winger, number seven, number eleven? Are we gonna overlap player uh, number two or number number three, or not? If our seven is going one v one because we have creative player like like Kuba Wasikowski played in, in Borussia Dortmund at this time. So we have to be ready, and then all players they have to know if Kuba dribbles the ball until the end of the, the field, if he's going to cross, what is the positioning of striker, of, of number 10, of number 8, how is number 11 of the opposite side. So there was all this tactical, uh, tactical knowledge I, 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 I've noticed. And uh, I use it until this, until today, because the football is a very simple game. There are, of course, some tactical rules, but we should not forget get that uh, tactics is tactics, but also you 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 believe in creativity of uh, your own players. That sometimes they have to go out of the system, out of this hand. That uh, they can, they have to break it, and one individual uh, player can can win your game. You should not forget about it during your week in the training sessions. 
And, and what formation did you guys normally play for the national team? As you know, the Dutch, they are perfect in 4-3-3. One exception rule was 2014 World Cup with uh, Louis van Gaal in the Holland that they played 3-5-2. Yeah. But mostly we played 4-3-3 in Polish national team or later on if you played against some good opponent, strong opponent, technically advanced, we played 4-2-3-1 with two six to, to dub, double six we called it that we had uh, to defend well and always four defenders and two defensive midfielder they were always responsible for uh, for our defensive part of, of, of match the six players they were all only responsible for for good defending but mostly four three three it was our base system because that, that's quite interesting isn't it i was going to ask did you ever adapt that you talked about that one adaptation with the two holding was it like, you know, for instance, you're going to play, you're playing Portugal, you may play a particular team. Did, was there any other variations or how, how, how fluid were they? How much did you respond to your opposition or did you say, look, this is how we play. We're going to be positive and play the way we play. It's of course, it's up to players. If you are, if your lineup is with the two holding midfielders, like you have two uh, Angolo Cantas here, yeah? like we said, that is a perfect example. So you, if you have two number six, we call it important number six. If you have two number six or holding midfielders, then uh, you ask yourself about not uh, having the offensive football. Uh, you mainly work hard to recover the ball, and maybe if you have two wingers, then just to pass the ball to winger, or either to his feet or in the, you know, in the front of him, and let him uh, race with, uh, with with the defenders. So if you have two holding midfielders, it means that you have only four creative players or attacking players. If you have one defensive midfielder, then you have uh, five defensive, five offensive. If you have uh, offensive um, wing, um, um, how to call it, wing backs uh, or uh, side defenders, not not central defenders, but the side defenders, full backs. Yeah. It means that you have more and more creative players. Yeah. If you have uh, like Philippe Lam, more like Marcelo in Real Madrid, we call it. There is different characteristic of of, of um, full back than Marcelo in Real Madrid or in the just player who is mostly responsible for for defensive uh, action. So it's so up to the opponent you play. It's so up to up to the, your um, your disposition, your place in the in the league. If I remember, I at the moment I'm coaching the reserve team in Lech Poznan, and we are number one in the League Two. Let's say it in, in English words: we are in League Two, number one. So we are a group of youngsters because our academy is known for developing very good in the youth players. So we are not uh, afraid to go everywhere in, in this league and play our own football. Because we are number one, we have lots of self-confidence, we are winning the games and, and it's, a, it's a, our mental way, our mental side is very, very on the top level. Of course, if you are uh, playing against a stronger opponent with very experienced players, sometimes you have to be more clever than they and then you have to wait maybe a little bit first 15-20 minutes, maybe it's a good way to have two holding midfielders then and, uh, and wait what's going happened on the field and if you see that you are good enough, that maybe it's uh, one change in the half time that one holding midfielder is off and then one creative offensive player is, is coming in. So it's up to strategy, up to tactics of the coach, how to... And, and how what about, to what about the... Uh, yeah. Rafa, sorry to interrupt you, mate. What about... Dealing with your plan against someone like Ronaldo, what, what, what are the, how do you deal with that? What are the plans in place to try and deal with that danger? <laughs> 1v1. The set, uh, fullback is not responsible for going up front. Just uh, carefully look at this uh, gentleman who is playing against you. You know who is he. So no more words about him. You got the video with his tricks and how is he performing. And then if you are... <clears throat> If you are very close to him and you, we say then if he's if he's going into the bench, then please follow him also as well and then, then be always with him and try to destroy his day, his his night. That you are close to him, you are uh, like piranha. Leo was always nice saying these words that you have to be like piranha against your opponent. That don't let him breathe, don't let him think that he is uh, one, two, three meters free. Of, of yourself, so he's mostly like Marcelo Bielsa is doing now, maybe man-marking, we, we call it. 
that if you play against your strong, stronger opponent, don't hesitate and don't be afraid to use one of your defenders to um, try to spoil the night of, of a super player from, from the opponent. And it was uh, our uh, strategy also. The... Sorry, sorry, I'm going to just interrupt because I know we, we, we're short on time, so I just want to go through... Um, yeah, sorry to interrupt you, mate. But so tell us a little bit. Then working with those players, you working with players like Lewandowski, all those superstars at the very high. Hello, can you hear me? Sorry, 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 sorry I lost you there. Okay, so just tell us you working with all those players, Lewandowski, those players at the very highest level. What was that like in terms of you know interacting them with yourself personally? How did you motivate those guys who were? Superstars are superstars in the making, and how do you interact with them and get the most out of them? Don't forget the number one of this group was Slow Ben Hacker, coach with experience with charisma. My job was to uh, connect them with the coach, connect them be between me and them, and uh, they were all uh, coming through. Lewandowski was 20 years old then when he started his uh, national team uh, career. He scored the first goal and uh, we played against San Marino away and it was his first goal ever in the national team. So he was... Uh, they were... Uh, they had a lot of uh, humility. They wanted to listen, experience code, they wanted to win games, they wanted to achieve something in football and that was the beginning of their career. So they were able to listen, they wanted to listen, they, were, they, they wanted to ask questions and uh, have good answers from top professional coach. And it was absolutely perfect to, to work with them and uh, we, we keep touch until, until now. It's always nice to to send some, some messages, messages and, and, and congratulate them, them on good, 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 good performances in their uh, top professional clubs. clubs. But, but at, at the moment, moment my job was to, to let them know that the coach is counting on them, them that coach is uh, believing in them, and tr and he trusts their skills, their skills and, and he knows their potential, potential because it's easy, easy to say now that Lewandowski is top professional and one of the best strikers ever. But don't forget that it was uh, Mr. Ben Hacker who discovered him for the uh, for Polish national team at the age of 20. Interesting. And, and so I just want to move on now to your, your current role, one of your roles, your head of coaching at Poznan, obviously, and you're currently doing the 23s as well. So tell us a little bit about that now. You've gone, you've gone all the way through all those great experiences at the highest level, and now you're going into working with, in youth team football for the way you've almost started your career. What, what's that like? Yeah, it was, it was, you know, my, uh, my uh, coaching uh, time in Poland was not the best. best. I, was I was fired from three teams, teams uh, and, and then, then you, you wake up the day after. after. What's going on with you? Why you are not succeeding? Think what is the, what should you improve in your next uh, coaching uh, place? But then I got a phone call from the chairman, the top chairman from Lech Poznan. He knows me from, from the past and he said, hey, I want I you want to work, work with academy. 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 We have some, some uh, difficult, some some, some difficult time there, there some bad period. period. We need, we need some, some experienced experience coach who is gonna, gonna uh, take care, care of our, our coaches, coaches, of our, our coaches, coaches program. program. As you know, we, we have, have a good, good uh, youngsters who are coming to to the first team. And I said, yeah, it might be the right place at the right time. But I'm taking off at the for. Some time from the uh, big football, football, from the from pressure, pressure, from uh, uh, winning, winning or not winning, winning and, and, and uh, from the stress and, and, and mental tightness. And, and I stepped in into, into academy as a head of coaching, coaching and my job was to take care of coaches, coaches of the development, development of, of, of uh, helping, helping them uh, and and with uh, training, training sessions, sessions with, with their, their mental way, with coach, with coaching on the pitch as well, with some. Uh, coaching, coaching camps, camps uh, all, all over, over the world, world if they, they wanted to go, it was my job to let, let them do it and help them to fix some some, some good, good interesting places. places. And it was three years, years and uh, I'm very, very happy that yesterday we played uh, some uh, big football night in Poland, uh, against Legia of Warsaw, so those the top two teams in Poland, and then we beat them 1-0. Well, one, one of our, our youngsters, he's, he's born, born 2002, 2002, so he's, he's uh, 17, 17 years old at the moment. He scored the winner, and, and so we are all very happy, happy at the academy that the guy, guy who played, played a week ago at my team in, uh, uh, in the reserve, he was yesterday the hero of, of, of the city and hero of the club. That's the best 
what you can get. If you work with youngsters and then you see that they are doing well in the first team with a professional environment, that they are uh, scoring some winning, uh, winning goal, in, it's, it's, it's very, very pleasant. If you know Jan Bernarek in England, player from Southampton, yeah. he's our academy graduate from La Paz. Wow. We have uh, players in all over the Europe and we are very proud of, of the way we develop them. We are very proud of the way that they do their professional, professional careers, careers and they play, play big football, football and, and, and that's, that's what it's what about. about. So tell us, t- tell us just a little bit about then about you know uh, the academy itself. What what age group do you start getting players into the academy? We have two kinds of academies. The first is uh, I call it grassroots or semi-professional. That is the age of eight. You start at age of eight up to age of 13, 14, sorry, 14, 14 years old. And it's in Poznan, based on our uh, main stadium, and uh, there is there are group uh, every every year every age group has uh, its own group, and then you move it into professional academy, which is uh, 60 kilometers away from Poznan. It's a place called Vronki, and we have four top teams over there. We have the reserve team under 18, 17, and 15. We have uh, 90 players. All of them they go to school which is uh, in uh, our program. There is a school, there is a hotel for, play, a hotel for players, and there are, we have eight uh, grass fields for, uh, for trainings in here. So 60 kilometers away is our fully professional uh, academy, it's our heart of our academy and the heart of our club. And it's 90 players, uh, fully pro, because we provide them with, with the sleeping conditions, with the food, with the school, so they are from 7 o'clock in the morning till 7 o'clock in the evening. They are fully focused about the school duties, about the trainings, about uh, all the other social activities, which uh, is our, our main job to do. And then, um, to tell us a bit about the, the younger age groups, at the gra- that grassroots, what's the methodology or the approach to those coaching a eight or nine-year-old at Lech Poznan? Our um, youth technical coordinator is from Portugal. Uh, his name is Amilcar Carvalho, and he is responsible for this age, for this youth, the youth, the youth groups until age of 14. And as you know, it's in Portugal, we are uh, in the time of uh, tactical periodization, kind of tactical periodization based on our game model and based on our uh, Polish conditions is used to be developed in, uh, in, uh, in uh, our youth groups. So all the coaches, they work within this uh, methodology. We have our the, the methodology department. It, it, uh, they are five top coaches from from these youth, youth groups. They are once a week um, at the meetings, and uh, for two hours of time, they are always trying to develop some, some or improve our game model, improve our uh, our uh, uh, coaching exercises. So, so you cannot say that we have one model or one uh, one coaching. Bible that uh, we used to work like that. No, 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 no. It's always moving. It's always uh, changing. Always developing. Always improving. And uh, because of, uh, because of that, I can say that in working in football, you are never sure 100 percent what's gonna happen next. Because it's always this question mark: what's gonna happen tomorrow? How is the future? And you always have to be ready to work more and more about uh, every day. It means that it's. I don't have exercises for my coaches that I'm giving them paper and please today is Tuesday and do this and do this, do this. All of my coaches, they are UEFA A uh, license or UEFA Elite Youth, all of them. Uh, we have uh, 30 coaches, so all of them, they, they have this, this coaching badges, the coaches background. So they are also experienced, they know how to work with their kids and my job is to just to be with them, to help them, to see if something is wrong or uh, something is not not in our way, that they can they can change it. But the coaches, on their own, they are also very important to develop their their, their uh, program, their training and It's working like that in in in, in Lech Poznan. And I'm quite happy about about this at the moment. Okay, and finally, because I know you got a session in a minute, what would what would your advice be to any young aspiring coach who? wants to get to the, the high levels in the game that you, you have and are at currently? Experience, experience, and one more time, experience. Don't be afraid to make mistakes and don't go too soon, too early to big football because then you have to get experience. 
I was also once in the age of 27, 30, 35, and I thought that I'm the best coach in the world and, and I will never uh, lose any game. And no one is, I will be the first coach in the world that is not going to be fired. But then you suddenly getting fired, then you are waking up day after without job. So you cannot be disappointed, you cannot be break down, you have to always believe that football is this kind of life, your mat, it's your life. That's, uh, I wake up every day and I'm very happy that I can go to training, I can go to the, my job and I can talk to players, talk to coaches, do some training session. It's, that's what it's all about. It's not about financial, about money. Because if you work good, somebody will say, hey, he's a good coach and I can maybe, maybe hire him into my team. It depends, semi-professional, professional. But first of all, my advice is experience every single day with the coach. It doesn't matter if it's age. Seven, seven aside football, nine aside football, eleven aside. Because every training session gives you experience. Try to look at exercises, but not look and copy and paste to your training session, but be always clever why you are doing this exercise. We live in the area of, of uh, YouTube, of lots of exercises, also designed by top professional coaches. <coughs> Sorry, but Guardiola and Alova Carlo Ancelotti, you can watch all training sessions. Okay, but you can watch it, but then you try to discover why he's doing this exercise. If you are uh, watching Pep Guardiola and your game model is based about uh, counter attacks because you have two perfect fast wingers who are good with crossing the ball and you have tall striker, then the positional game of Pep Guardiola, maybe there is not a training for you. So you have to be sure that your way of football, you want to play this football, either with uh, counter attacks or positional football, then you try to find some, some uh, tutor or some uh, mentor and then follow his steps. Why he's doing this? Why he's doing that? Why this exercise? How, how can I incorporate into my uh, daily training session? And then you become better and better. And of course, experience of football game, because being a coach is a one time, one, one part on the training from Monday till Saturday, but on Saturday when there is a game day, and it's your, 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 I remember this fantastic from, uh, I think, Sir, Sir uh, Matt Busby or some, some, some I was in the Manchester United Museum. And there was on the floor that every, every game of training activity is like Christmas to me. So you know that the Saturday is a big game, it's like Christmas. And Christmas is time that we always uh, wait for it. And, and we always want to have it as a, something special. Game as a game day is always like this. And I, at the age of 46, because I'm 46, and I always, uh, I'm, I'm always waiting. I, I, I'm always waiting until end of the week that there's a weekend that there's a game that I can be with my players and we can go and, and, and play and try to win. So it's my, it's my. It's my my, my advice, advice for you. Experience. experience. Don't, don't be afraid, be afraid to make mistakes, mistakes and, and coach every, every single time you can. Either it's a 2v2, 4v4, 6v6, 8v8, 9v9 or 11 Rafael, thank you very much. Uh, it's been fantastic. Sorry, there is one minute until my training starts. And I cannot yeah. say to my boys, sorry, I'm late because yeah. uh, I, I have appreciate to it. talk thank nice you very to much. good people. <laughs> thank you, so. Thank you very much. See you. See you soon. Bye. Bye. Thanks for tuning in to the MyPersonalFootballCoach.com Soccer Player Development Podcast. MyPersonalFootballCoach.com's Dynamic Ball Mastery Program is the world's leading online individual technical training program, proven and developed at the highest level in the English Premier League. Sign up now to train like the pros and take your game to the next level. Master the ball, master the game. <laughs>